Hello everyone and welcome back to Drug Design in Alkipedia. Uh, today we're going to start the proper course of the drug design. Uh, in the last lecture, you can watch, if you didn't watch that video, you can watch the contents of this video, this course. And today we're going to start the proper course. Uh, in this course, we will study about, we will start from the very basic and that is medicinal chemistry. And then we will go to uh, drug discovery and uh, the drug design and all the contents we discussed in the last lecture we will go there. Okay, medicinal chemistry. You should learn that the medicinal chemistry is actually an interdisciplinary research area incorporating synthetic organic chemistry, biochemistry, pharmacology, molecular biology and pharmaceutical chemistry in the search for better drug. So this is an interdisciplinary research area. This is not uh, confined to a specific area. Uh, in this medicinal chemistry study, uh, almost all the areas are involved, like the organic chemistry, biochemistry, pharmacology, molecular biology, pharmaceutical chemistry. So this is a very, if you want to get a better drug, I mean, in the search for better drug, mean uh, if one chemist can do one work, the other chemist can well, we can do the in the better way the second work. So therefore, the therefore multiple multi multidisciplinary course is this one. So the science that deals with the discovery or design of new therapeutic agent mean the discovery and the or design of new therapeutic agents and their development into useful medicine, and then you convert it into a useful medicine. That is the science. So medicinal chemistry is actually the science of discovery and design. And you want to introduce a new therapeutic agents, okay? Okay, and then the primary objective, the primary objective of medicinal chemistry is the design and discovery of new compounds that are suitable for use as drugs. So this is the main objective. And the main aim of this course is the design design and discovery both okay design and discovery of new compound that are suitable as drugs mean you need to uh, get the compounds you need to design or discover the compounds uh, they have the therapeutical effects so you can use for them okay then uh, then uh, what the drug design is like we're going to talk about drug design and drug discovery. What drug, drug discovery and drug design is and what is the difference between these? Okay, so the first is what, what's a drug? So a chemical substance that treats or cure a disease is called a drug. So the chemical substance that treats, which can be used for the treatment and for the cure of a disease. So this is actually a small molecule, small molecule that interacts with a target, often protein, protein involved in the disease process. So activator and inhibitor. One is activator and the other is inhibitor. We are going to discuss this in detail in further lectures, next lectures. Then drug discovery. The drug, you know, you know that the drug is actually a chemical substance that is a small molecule which can interact with the target. So what the drug discovery is, this is the process of finding such a small molecule. We said this small molecule, that these are interacting with each other, the small molecule and the, the small molecule. Combination, combination of approaches. I mean, drug discovery is not just one process. This is a combination of approaches and you want to get to that small molecule which we can use as a drug okay so this is the process of process of finding such a small molecule you can also say the process of finding a drug which is a combination of approaches you can also say like that okay then the next is drug discovery or drug design what is the difference between these two uh, in principle design is more rational and targeted okay what do you mean by rational and targeted? And discovery is more serendipitous. Okay? I mean, it depends upon serendipity. Serendipity means you just get something by chance. And you say, oh, this is a drug. So this is called serendipity. But design and discovery share a lot more, a lot, and are uh, 
synonymous, synonymous in a pharmaceutical context. Synonymous mean like it can be used instead of one instead of in, instead of the other one. Okay, so that is called synonymous. So therefore, uh, you should know about this that actually uh, the drug discovery and design drug discovery and design so the main difference between the discovery and design is like the discovery is more serendipity by chance and design is you just sit in the lab and you design why computer and theoretically and first you have a disease or a target and then you just uh, discover sorry then you design something so that is different but when you just go to pharmaceutical chemistry so they say that in pharmaceutical these are synonyms. I mean, these are synonyms of each other. Okay. And therefore, there is no more difference between these two. That this is the drug design or drug discovery, or which one is the drug design or drug discovery. Okay. Uh, in medicinal chemistry, in medicinal chemistry, the chemist attempts to design and synthesize pharmaceutical agent that has a desired biological effect on the human body or some other living system uh, actually the drug is the drug the drug which is designed or which is discovered so in here we talk about the design and synthesize okay you design something in the life and then you go and you synthesize a pharmaceutical agent that has a desired biological effect on human body so this is the word biological effect it means you need biological effects from that drug or from that agent you're using that has desired biological effects on the human body or some other living system as you know that first we do in vivo in vitro in vitro in, in vivo like we go we do it outside the body then inside the body and then finally uh, that is introduced into a living system or the human body so that is a very final stage uh, such a compound could also be called a drug so this is actually a drug that is what we do all the, everything we do to just discover a drug for a biological effect or a disease one definition could be said is, could, could could be to classify drug as compounds which interact with a biological system to produce a biological response and this is quite interesting compounds which interact with a biological system to produce a biological response uh, it means these are the compounds which can interact with your body, the targets in your body, in the biological system to produce a biological response and there will be different response like uh, there is inhibition of something in your body that will start or something is disturbed in your body, in the cell, inside the cell, it will start functioning and the work. And how they will work, we will discuss this in, in, future, in future course, okay? So what are everyday drugs and you know about the everyday drugs that how many everyday drugs are, uh, are we, we, we use normally. Uh, consider how the following example fit our definition. Like see we defined that biological, biological compound for biological response. Number first morphine. Morphine interacts with the body to bring pain relief. Now we know that the interaction of morphine interaction of morphine is the interaction with that um, target and the response is the pain relief snake venom the second one interacts with the body to cause death okay and uh, this interacts with the body to cause death it means it there is this death of the cell and death of the body this is the response strychnine interacts with the body to cause death oh, again LSD interacts with the body to produce hallucination so this is a very dangerous drug this interaction this is sorry this interacts and then it creates hallucination coffee we use daily coffee interacts with the body to wake you up penicillin interacts with bacteria cells to kill them Sugar interacts with the tongue to produce a sense of taste. So all these compounds fit our definition of drugs. As we discussed before, that the drug actually, this is a therapeutic agent which interacts with the body, mostly with the targets. So these all are the targets. These all have the targets for each of the, 
for each of the biological effect. So these biological effects are very important. Now there are some of the uh, very important terms, uh, therapeutic index. So this therapeutic index, there are some of the other terms as well. We will discuss in uh, other in, in the next lectures and where we can discuss in detail about these terms and these are very useful terms which can tell us about the drugs discoveries and their uh, how much drug can be used and how the drug can be used and uh, where the drug can be used so these are very important okay let's talk about the therapeutic agent right <clears throat> Okay, therapeutic index indicates how safe a particular drug is. It means the therapeutic index is therapeutic index is about the safety of a particular drug. It means uh, we can discuss this at uh, LD50 and LDED50. Now, LD is for lethal, L is for lethal drug, and ED for effective drug. Okay, so LD50 means the 50% of the drug which is used and that is lethal, that is called lethal LD50. In effective, if its effectiveness is 50%, then we, we call it ED50. Okay, so LD50 divided by ED50 is equal to therapeutic index. Okay, now major, what, what does it do? why we use LD50? It measures the ratio of undesirable to desirable drug effects. Undesirable, this is lethal, effective is the desirable. So this is the measure of the ratio uh, of desire, undesirable to desirable drug ratio. As you know that if we write like this LD50 is equal to ED50 like this, so you know that this one and these are the same. How are these the same? So you know that um, if we write like this, we can just do it that divide both with ED50. For example, I say divide this with ED50, this will cancel and this will become ED50 in here. Okay. Therefore, this is the ratio of the measure of the ratio of undesirable to desirable drug effects. For in view systems, three therapeutic index could be the ratio of LD50, as we know that. This is the lethal dose for 50% of the test of the test animals to the ED50, which is the effective dose that produces the maximum therapeutic effect in 50% of the test animals. Okay, so this is the effective dose that produces the maximum therapeutic effect in 50% of the test animals. The larger the therapeutic index the greater the margin of safety of the drug. You should remember this one. So the larger the therapeutic index of the index, the greater the margin of safety of the drug. So it means that uh, actually the therapeutic, the therapeutic index give you, gives you the safety, that how safe a particular drug is. So the larger the therapeutic index, you, you should see that uh, if it has larger therapeutic index, so the the safe the drug will be more safe okay if useful drug can be poison can be poisons at high doses or over long periods of use does the opposite hold true can a poison be a medicine at low doses in certain cases this is found to be so rare yes I mean, if you can use a poison at high dose or, or long period of use, that's the opposite hold. Can a poison be a medicine at very low dose? For example, you use a medicine at low dose and can that be, uh, can that be a, dose, a drug? I mean, you can use a poison as a drug. So you say, yes, we can be used. In some, in some cases, yes, okay. Now you know that uh, tubicurin, kirarin, kirarin, sorry, used in surgical operations to relax muscles. Under proper control and in the correct dosage, a lethal poison may also may well have 
a, a, an important medicinal role. Like if you just use a correct dosage and a lethal poison, that can be used they can be used as a drug, an important medicinal role. Keep remember, if you use in control and very low, low drug, that can be used and that can be used for a very important biological effect. Alternatively, lethal poisons can be the starting point for the development of useful drugs. Okay, for example, ACE inhibitors are important cardiovascular drugs that were developed in part from the structure of the snake venom. Now the snake venom is a very dangerous, you know, it can kill the person, but that used for SE inhibitor and which is a very important cardiovascular drug. So it just developed from the snake venom. So you can see in here that yes, the, the, the venom or the poison can be used at a very low level as a drug like a control is important for that or it can be used as a starting point for the development of the other drugs okay so it means it can be used for both both processes it can uh, be used as like this and that one okay now we talked about in here uh, this thing and now you know in here you see in here if you see This is parental, internal, internal. Uh, you can see this is actually the root where oral administration, we call it, it internal. And parent, parental, that is the root inter, in IV, intravenous injection. Okay? It means you introduce something to the body via oral or you introduce via injection okay if when you just introduce it it goes to GI tract you know this is the GI membrane this is also the GI tract membrane this one what happens absorption happen in here I mean they absorbed and it absorbed here or the one which is not absorbed it, it excretes goes outside the unabsorbed material through the GI tract that is in the feces it goes okay so these are the excretory system which uh, excretory vests the which goes uh, go outside the body so it means that you introduce from the here from here or from here if this is oral the oral will go to the GI tract and after that absorption will happen and it will introduce into the bloodstream if you use IV the injection it will directly be introduced into the it will directly introduce into the bloodstream okay now when you it comes to the bloodstream from the bloodstream it goes to the tissue deposits it goes for the metabolism sorry first it goes to the liver first pass metabolism when it passes Metab metabolism in here then uh, it goes to excretion and it excretes via drug sorry kidney in the urine or lungs it exhales gases okay now come to the tissue deposit it goes to the bloodstream or the bloodstream will give it here okay so you can see in here or from the um, again the same process but when it goes to the bloodstream it will pass through this metabolism okay you can see from the both side it passes metabolism and in here it comes to metabolism in here also it comes to metabolism or it passes this membrane and it goes to the target site and then desired biological activity or it can also go to the other tissues and then the unwanted effects can happen. It means that, let me summarize it, it means that if we use a drug, we introduce a drug into the body, there are chances. Number first is, you introduce via inter, an, an internal or parenteral, okay, it means like oral or direct into the bloodstream, why I am. 
it will pass the liver then bloodstream then the membrane and it will go to the target and the biological effect will happen so this is one of the case this okay one of the other cases is it will go to the other side from the membrane and it will cause the unwanted effects so you see in here uh, sometimes directly from the blood it goes to the metabolism and it excrete via kidney or the lungs the other is it goes to the tissue deposit and again it comes to the bloodstream and the same process happen again. It means if you want to see that this drug reach to the target, what are you going to do? You're going to see this. It will go to the bloodstream, then liver, bloodstream, okay, again to the bloodstream and then to the, this one. Or it can go via this process, this way. There are two ways they it can go the drug can travel like one this one or this one okay and then you see it will go to the target so this is this is the way it can follow and it can reach to the target okay and it can uh, show their desired biological activity or it can also go to the other way so I think this will be very clear to you people uh, I think this will be very clear and you can understand that how it happens now receptors as drug targets what receptors are and they can be used as drug targets receptors are specific areas of certain protein and glycoproteins that are found either embedded in cellular membrane or in the nuclei of living cell it means for example this is the cell with you and in this in this cell there is a part like this and this is actually an embedded area so this we, we call it either embedded in the cellular membrane this is the membrane okay or this will be inside the body in here this is the nucleus and in this nucleus for example it will happen it means the receptors these are the areas we, we call it we call them specific area of certain proteins and glycoprotein you should remember this one proteins and glycoproteins that are found either embedded in the cellular membrane or in the nuclei of living cells so it means these are embedded in the cell membrane or in the nuclei okay now any endogenous and exogenous chemical agent that binds to a receptor is known as a ligand now, if there is any endogenous and which comes from somewhere and it binds to this target. So, we call this one as ligand, okay. This is a ligand which comes and it binds to the receptor and the general region on a receptor where a ligand binds is known as binding domain. So, the general region on the receptor, this receptor has, for example, there is a receptor, receptor is like this, for example. And then there is an area, the ligand comes and it attaches to it. This area, this area with, where it attached is called the binding domain. So in the receptor, now you know that the receptor is a specific area in uh, where uh, made up of protein or glycoprotein where the, where the ligand can attach. We call it the ligand okay so now you know that the receptor it can receive the it can the receptor can receive the it can receive the message sorry uh, so the receptor is actually the, the the protein or glycoprotein which can receive the message from the outside okay uh, it it can be on the uh, it can be both on in, in the cellular membrane or in the nuclei. Okay. Now, what? The, sorry, the globular protein act as a cell cell's letter box. Yeah, there are two words. Let me explain these two words as well, uh, or maybe it will come later as well. So we can discuss these in later. There is exogenous and endogenous. Uh, we're gonna explain each and every letter. Don't worry about anything. In this course, okay. Glabular protein act as 
uh, act as cells letter box so uh, globular protein it can act as a uh, cells letter box and located mostly in the cell membrane so these located in the cell membrane you should know that the globular proteins which are uh, which act as letter boxes on in the cell membrane receive messages from chemical messengers coming from other cell so this is for example a place globular protein is here they receive messages from the chemical messenger coming from the uh, from other cell transmit a message into the cell leading to a cellular effect transmit a message into the cell leading to a cellular effect what does it mean it means that for example this it received this message and it transmit this message to the cell okay so we call it transmit a message into the cell leading to a cellular effect different receptors receptors specific for different chemical messengers there are receptors receptors it means that there there are different receptors uh, which are specific for specific messages like for different mess different chemical messages messengers i'm sorry different chemical messengers each cell has a range of receptors in the cell membrane making it responsive to different chemical messengers so each cell has a range of receptors mean each cell has its own range of receptors uh, which are embedded in the cell membrane and making it responsive to different chemical messengers and so uh, in the cell membrane uh, or in the nuclei but first in the cell membrane that the ligand that ligand do not doesn't go if a ligand comes and it doesn't go inside the cell uh, it just give the message to this to the one embedded uh, to the receptor and the receptor then further it gives to the cell inside the cell and then th there is a response inside the cell okay let's talk about the next one cell communication what cell communication is cells are individual but in a complex organism like human beings they have to get along with one another uh, in in there, for example, this is a cell, and there is it has its own world. Each cell has a complete different world inside, which is nuclei and many other things. But in a complex human being, complex organism like human being, definitely this is not the only one. There are a lot of other cells, and they need to be in contact with each other. So a plasma membrane is essential for a cell that isolates cell from its surrounding. So you can see the outside, the outside this is called the cell membrane, for example, this is the cell membrane, or we call it the plasma membrane. These both are the same, cell membrane or plasma membrane. Uh, a cell cannot survive if it cannot sense changes in the extracellular environment and respond to them. Like this is very important for a cell to survive if it cannot interact with the or it cannot interact and it cannot know about the changes outside the cell so that is called extracellular so a cell cannot survive if it cannot sense changes in extracellular extracellular environment and respond to it okay cell communication let's talk about cell communication is the process of cell detecting and responding to signals in the extracellular environment like we said that a cell cannot survive without sensing the changes so this is actually the cell communication is the process of the cell through which it can detect it can know and then it can respond to the those signals in the extracellular so the resp the, the, the cell signals it should it should be detected and it it should de the response this is needed to coordinate cellular activities in a multicellular organism that is cell division okay so this is very important their uh, assistance with each other their coordination with each other that they should coordinate in the activities and a multicellular organism multicellular organism and uh, definitely different processes happen like cell division cell communication or cell signaling it means that the cell communication is also called cell signaling involves the incoming and the outgoing of signals for example this is a communication the the signals come from outside or the signals go from the inside to outside so this is the cell communication or cell signaling signals are, are agents that influence the properties of cell 
these are the agents which influence the properties of the cell and signals affect the conformation of a receptor leading to a response in the cell. How it changes or affects the conformation? We'll study in next lectures or future lectures maybe. Uh, so therefore, you should know about these. Actually, the cell, the signals, uh, they change the conformation of the receptor. Okay. So then there is a response and that response leads to the cell communication. Okay, now cell signaling. A receptor activation is involved signal transduction and cellular response. Cell signaling, it means there are three, three points for the cell signaling. Number first is receptor activation. Uh, I'm going to just tell you, explain in the next slide uh, in the image. Signaling molecules bind to receptors. For example, there is a molecule that comes and it binds to the receptor, the receptor which is present in, uh, in the cell membrane in here. Signal transduction. Activated receptor, this receptor is activated and then stimulates a flow of changes leading to signal transduction pathway. Like activated receptor, it stimulates a flow of changes inside leading to a signal transduction pathway inside the cell. Cellular response. Several different responses alter or changes activity of one or more enzymes. Okay, so this is the cell response. Alter structural protein function and change gene expression. You should remember these four points. Several different responses. Number one, the alter, alter activity of one or more enzyme, it changes the activity of the enzyme or it changes the structural protein function or it changes the gene expression. So these are the three point gene expression, uh, enzyme activity change and modification and also modification in the structural cell function. Now you can see the cell signaling and we can explain it and you can see it. Okay, how can it be? Let me just make it bigger for you. Yes. You can see here, uh, this has been taken from the McGraw Hill companies, which is the copyright of them. Uh, okay, if it works, if it becoming more and more, then it will be very good. Yes, uh, where you can see, um, I'm saying to you, number one, this is the first part, receptor activation. What receptor? The binding of a single signaling molecule cause a conformational change in a receptor that activates its function. You can see this is the signaling molecule which comes and it activates this receptor. You can see this is the receptor before, like you can see unactivated receptor protein. You can see this part which is like a hook, but when it, this, the, the ligand comes and the binding, this signal molecule which binds, it changes this conformation. You can see this one. You can see these two parts, you can compare. They change. The receptor activation happen and then when it happens, you can see the next part, number two. In the next part, start. Uh, in the next part, you can see that uh, signal transduction happen after receptor activation signal transduction happen, the activated receptor stimulates a series of proteins that forms a signal transduction pathway. So you can see this signal goes from here to here. Okay, so this is called signal transduction pathway. Okay, what happens in the third, the cellular response, then the cell response. In the first part, what happened, the receptor activation happened, then the signal transduction happened why these proteins and this form a signal transduction pathway formed and then the signal transduction pathway affect the functions and or amount of cellular proteins thereby producing a signal response okay now what happened that the the it affected the functions and the amounts of cellular proteins so therefore uh, a cellular response is a cellular response is going on. Now, 
You can see the intracellular target and cellular response. Number one, enzyme. We just talked before that there will be enzyme or protein, structural protein or gene regulatory protein. These are the three things, the enzyme, protein and gene. So enzyme alters metabolism or other cell functions. Okay. So the metabolism or other cell functions are changed. I'm sorry, I cannot just move that, but it's okay. Uh, cell structural protein, so alter cell shape or movement. Structural protein means it changes or altered cell shape or movement. So it changed the cell shape or movement. Gene regulatory protein, the last one, altered gene expression which which changes the amounts of proteins in the cell it means if if you change the enzyme what will happen metabolism will change or modification in the cell function will happen okay cell function or cell function or the metabolism will change via enzyme why protein structural protein the cell shape or the moment will change cell shape or the moment will change with protein and with the gene regulatory protein, the gene expression will change and, and ultimately the amounts of protein in the cell will modify or the change. Okay? So these are, uh, this is the way how, how it works. You can see in, de you can see in detail, you can explain in detail, you can see we said these three points, receptor activation, cell, cell transduction and cellular response. So in this, the, the cell activation, in the first you can see uh, it comes in here and it activated, sorry, this is the first one you can see, uh, sorry, this is the first you can see, that this is the cell, this is the activation, this is the first one. Then the second one is uh, cell transduction and it activated cell stimulates a flow of, you can see this is the flow, you can see this flow from here to here and then this is what? This is the cellular response. It can respond in, in, in three ways. You can see we discussed this, these three ways in detail that it can, it can, it can work like uh, to change the metabolism when, when an enzyme is involved in there or it can change the shape of, or movement. Now you can see and or it can change by structural protein or gene regulatory protein. It can change the gene expression with changes the amount of protein. Now, signaling signaling molecule ligand. Okay, signaling molecule ligand binds non-covalently to receptor with high degree of specificity. Okay, uh, let me make it bigger again. Like then it can be shown clearly. Yes. Okay, now you can see. Binds non-covalently. It means that when the receptor comes, the receptor will bind non-covalently, not covalently, co non-covalently to receptor with high degree of specificity. And specificity, specificity, is, specificity is very important. You can see this is the hormone which comes and it binds here. You can see this is, and then it changes. This is the activation. Binding and release between receptor and ligand is relatively rapid. I mean, this binding and release is very, very rapid. It, it, it happens very quickly. It means it is not a slow process. And the ligand alters, the lig ligand, ligands alter receptor structural conformation changes. Okay? This is all, you can see the binding of a hormone receptor causes a conformational change in the receptor resulting in receptor activation. So this is the signal, signaling molecule ligand. Uh, you, you can explain in these like they will attach non-covalently and this will be very rapid quick and ligands change uh, receptor structure conformation change okay so this was all for today and uh, we can just talk about the next part in the next lectures uh, if there is anything you want to know about the drug design you can write below in the comment and if you like this video Please subscribe to this channel and share with your friends. See you soon with a new lecture. See ya. Bye-bye. Allah Hafiz.